This is a video on checking and adding oil in your vehicle for beginners. If you've never checked the oil on your car and you leave it up to somebody else or you let the garage do it, this will show you how to do it yourself. It's real simple, straightforward, it's not complicated. Uh, hopefully you'll get something out of this. I hope so. Now the most important thing you can do is look for your operator's manual or your owner's handbook. It all depends on what you want to call it. This is your most important resource on checking your oil or your other fluids in your vehicle, believe it or not. Now if you open up your manual and you go all the way to the end of your manual, in the back of the book, you will see an index like this. This will show you how to check your engine oil level. And of course you want to turn that page and you want to look at it. It's real simple. Now when you go to the proper page in your manual, as you can see here, this will tell you how to check your oil. If you look at your blue arrow, it will tell you to basically how to, it'll tell you to remove your yellow dipstick and clean it with a paper towel, push it back in all the way, remove it again and keep the tip lower and check the level. Uh, it doesn't show a good picture of the dipstick uh, and basically it doesn't go over where the fill level is, where it's not. That's why I don't like some manuals. Now if you look at the red arrow, it tells you if it's 4.76 millimeters or 3 sixteenths above below the full level, yada yada yada. This is why a lot of people don't check their oil because they try to make it over complicated in these manuals. And I'm going to try to simplify this as much as I possibly can for you. Now this is the other page. This happens to be a Saturn manual. It doesn't get too descriptive. It doesn't show you the dipstick or what the level should be. It overcomplicates things unfortunately. It tells you when to add oil and it tells you if the oil is at or below the add line then you'll need to add oil. And it tells you you need to add one quart or 0.95 liters at the oil filler cap but you must use the right kind. Okay this this makes it all complicated. And then it tells you you need to basically jump to the capacities and specifications in the index. Well, a lot of people are like, well, the heck with this. Is This isn't worth it. It's too complicated. I'm going to try to simplify this as much as possible. So it doesn't matter what year vehicle you have. All vehicles have a owner's manual. Hopefully you have one and all of them have an index in the back. As you can see, this is my 73 Chevelle Chevy owner's manual. Like I said, all of them have indexes and all of them will tell you how to check your oil and your other fluids. But this one we're just going to be concentrating on oil. Now this manual happens to be a 1990 Dodge Dakota owner's manual. They like to complicate things. Good example. If you look at the red arrow, it tells you basically to assure the proper formulated engine oils, it's recommended that Mopar oils or equivalent uh, be used. They're trying to get you to use a basically go to the dealership and use their oils. Not needed. You can go to an auto parts store and use a regular motor oil. It will not hurt anything. The other thing is by the blue arrow you're seeing where it's talking about engine viscosity. It's talking about SAE grades and all of this. Don't let this overwhelm you. Don't let this confuse you. Basically, you need to worry about getting engine oil in this vehicle because if you don't take care of the vehicle, it's basically going to go kaput on you and you're talking about an expensive repair bill. You do not, again, you do not need to go to the dealership to get motor oil. Motor oil is motor oil, believe it or not. Now, this happens to be the same owner's manual. If you look, it's talking about energy conserving oils. It likes to really get into some complicated complicated stuff. Anything to confuse you when it comes to motor oil. If you're not used to adding oil to your vehicle or you never have, basically, like I said, this is going to simplify. If you look at your owner's manual, it's good that you read this and you learn a little bit. If you don't want to learn about oils and get all complicated about it and get confused about it, then this video is basically going to make it easier for you. This happens to be the other page of the owner's manual. If you look, it basically shows you what is going to be on an oil cap. Like it tells you to use SAE 10 weight 30. A lot of people are like, okay, what's a SAE? What's uh, 10W-30? Don't let all of this confuse you. Don't let it confuse you at all. I will make it easier on you and basically 
uh, make it simple, real simple and to the point so you can check the oil yourself. Keep in mind that oil can be purchased from anywhere. If you go into the store and you want to worry about SAE, whether or not it's energy efficient and all of this stuff, that's fine. Do that. Take your owner's manual with you. Go into Walmart. Go into the auto parts store. And if you compare the two, you know that you're going to notice that basically anything that's on the bottles and the shelf is going to match what's in your owner's manual. If you're starting to worry about all this API and SAE stuff and and SAI and all these other funky terminologies. Now you're probably asking why should I put oil in my vehicle or why should I check it? I'll let my boyfriend, my girlfriend, my husband, my wife, my mistress, my dog, my cat check my oil for me or I'll wait until a low oil light comes on and then I'll add oil to it. This is the attitude that I get from my two teenagers as well as my wife. Uh, if the low oil light comes on, they come screaming to me and say, hey, low oil light's on. And uh, basically, I end up having to check the oil. Or they wait until it wraps or starts making a weird noise. And they say, you know what? I think it's time to start adding oil. So they add oil. You don't want to do that. You want to take care of your vehicle. If you don't take care of your vehicle, it's not going to take care of you. Bottom line, this is very important to take care of your car engine. If you don't, it's going to be an extremely, extremely expensive repair. After all, if you don't take care of your vehicle, something like this could happen. I'm just kidding. Relax. <laughs> this will not happen if you do not check the oil in your vehicle. I couldn't resist. In all actuality, something like this will happen. Bottom line is, if you go and spend $5 or less for a stupid quart of oil, you can prevent something like this from happening and being very costly. But then again, if you're loaded and you got plenty of money and you don't worry about the engine being bad or you want to take it to somebody else and let them do it, then so be it. Go ahead. If you've got plenty of money, don't put oil in. Let the engine blow. Mechanics need the money too, such as myself. Now we're going to go over dipsticks and what a dipstick is. Even though you may call a child or of yours a dipstick or <laughs> somebody you uh, get aggravated with, uh, I've used the terminology a lot, we're going to go over dipsticks, what they are, the different types of them, and what to look for. Now, the first hurdle you're going to come across if you want to check your oil is getting the hood open. If you can't get the hood open, you can't check your oil. Look in your owner's manual. That can't hurt anything. Uh, and you shouldn't be able to misinterpret anything on how to get your hood open. If you notice, most vehicles will have clearly marked where you can check your oil. If you notice, see that yellow handle right there? That yellow handle right there, that's your oil. Not all vehicles are like this, but this happens to be a Chevy Blazer. Now, this happens to be a Saturn S series. If you notice, the yellow handle again, you should be seeing a pattern here. It's yellow, stands out like a sore thumb. This happens to be a Dodge Stratus. Again, yellow. Stands out like a sore thumb. But there's two of them. But if you read them, one says transmission fluid. And the other one says engine oil. Like I said, real easy to spot. And this vehicle happens to be a Toyota pickup truck. Again, the yellow dipstick. If you notice, you'll see a pattern between all these vehicles. Not all vehicles will have a yellow color-coded dipstick. Keep this in mind. Some might be black, some might not have color at all. So you need to look at your owner's manual to determine where your dipstick's going to be. Now if you pull on the handle, the yellow handle we were talking about, uh, at the end you're going to pull it all the way out and you're going to have a rag and you're going to wipe it all the way off. And you're going to see something on the end of it that looks like this. Basically this is where you're going to look it tells you what your oil level is. Your normal is pretty much your oil level will be in the middle. And of course there's your add all the way at the bottom and your overfill at the top. You want to keep your oil level in the middle of these basically these little crisscross things in the middle. And I'm going to show you some other pictures as well. Now like I said not all dipsticks are color coded. Some are chrome plated. Some are black. This happens to be an example of another dipstick. Now this is what the end of the dipstick looks like. This is what I was talking about. If you look at the two arrows, the one at the bottom where it's next to the fold, this is the highest level the oil should be. The, one, the red arrow at the bottom, or at the top rather, where it says add, this is the lowest it should be. What you're shooting for is those two little dots in the middle. As long as it's between the add and the fold, you're okay. You don't want to go over the full mark. If you're right up to the full mark, you're fine. Again, this is a different style of dipstick. If you look at the red arrow on the right, this is the maximum oil level that you should have. 
and the red arrow on the left, hopefully you know your difference between your left and your right, is your minimum level. You want to try to be between these two. You can get it all the way up to that little dot on the right hand side where the arrows by the max. That's your maximum. You don't want to go over that. But if you're all the way up to that, that's fine. You're safe. At least you have oil in your vehicle. Like I said before, if you're in doubt, look at your owner's manual. Now here's a video that shows you how to do it. Get yourself a paper towel like you see on the right here. And see the yellow handle? That's what you're going to be going for. You're going to be going for that yellow handle. You're going to pull that yellow handle out that I'm pointing to right here. Real simple. Wipe it off. Real simple. Now I know you're not going to be able to see what it looks like on the end of the dipstick. And then you're going to put it back in your vehicle after you wipe it off. It doesn't have to be perfectly clean. And then you're going to let it sit for, oh shoot, I'd say about three to five seconds. And then you're going to pull it back out with your paper towel and you're going to look at where the oil level is. This happens to be my son's vehicle. So it has no oil in it whatsoever. It's supposed to be at the full mark where my finger is. I know you can't see it that well, and I apologize for that. So obviously, this is going to need some oil. And I'm going to show you how to do that. It's real easy to do, believe it or not. So what you're going to do is you're going to add oil. So now you're ready to add oil to your car because you know it's low. What kind of oil do you go with? Well, if you look at this, it says engine oil, and it says 5W-30. That's 5 weight 30. That tells you what kind of oil you're going to be needing to add. Now, some of these unscrew. Other ones just pop straight off. You're going to have to play with it. Again, look at your owner's manual. And this will tell you what kind of oil you should use. Or you can use the filler cap as a reference to go by. Now, we've got our cap removed. Real simple. Now, we're going to add our engine oil. I'm not using a funnel because I've done this I don't know how many times so I'm not saying I'm a pro but it's real easy to do you remove your cap and you get as close as possible I only had a little bit of spill there and you add your oil this vehicle had basically no oil in it at all if you're worried about adding too much uh, don't add as much as you see me doing here but if the dipsticks completely empty like it was here I'm adding an entire quart and then what I'm going to end up doing after I do that, I'm going to check my oil again to make sure it's on a level. Again, what you want to do after you add your oil is you're going to let this sit just for a little bit, enough so it can sit in the bottom of your engine. And you're going to end up checking your oil again. It's a rather simple, easy process. Here you can see I'm adding another quart to it not happy that it was two quarts low again this is my son's vehicle and he doesn't know how to change oil that's a whole primary purpose behind these v uh, videos believe it or not is I'm getting tired of being the only one in the family that knows how to do this it gets a little old after a while it really does now that you have added oil to your vehicle you're going to put your dipstick back in after you've wiped it off of course and you're gonna let it sit just for three to five seconds like I had said use a paper towel again and you're going to look at your level. This happens to be perfect. It happens to be right where it's supposed to be. I got lucky. However, if you do this and it's not, add a little bit more. Put the dipstick in. Again, let it sit three to five seconds. Pull it back out. Check it again. You may have to do this multiple times in order to get the proper level. Again, you do not want to overfill this. You want to get it right. As you can see here, I'm double checking it and triple checking it because I want to be safe about it. And I don't want to screw it up. Now, if you check your dipstick and the gauge says it's not correct and it's low, obviously, you're going to need to add more oil. Again, you do not want to go over the full line if you can help it. This is real simple to do. It's not that complicated. It really isn't. Now, if your oil level is fine, you want to go ahead and put your cap back on, tighten it down, make sure that it's not loose, and you've checked your oil. It's that simple. And another little trick you can do is if you look at the top of your oil cap, it will tell you what kind of oil you should be using. As you can see indicated by the red arrow, it says 5W-30. Pretty simple, isn't it? Now, not all oil caps will tell you what kind of oil you need to be using. Most of them do. Other ones will refer you to your owner's manual, as you can see here highlighted by the red arrow. Here is another oil fill cap. If you notice, this one tells you to use 5W-30 as well. That's 5 weight 30 just write this number down go to the auto parts store get yourself some 5w-30 
and that's the kind of oil that you want to put in your car real simple now hopefully you've learned something from this video and hopefully you've learned how to check your oil and how to add engine oil if you have any difficulties in doing this send me a message I'd be more than happy to walk you through it it may take a while depending on the kind of vehicle that you have but it shouldn't be that hard it's real easy to do the bottom line is look at your owner's manual it's not that hard to do it really isn't you're gonna save yourself a lot of time if you actually check your engine oil and uh, you're gonna save yourself a big repair bill I look forward to any comments or any suggestions and thanks for watching